quite a, a significant landmark as far as Bo's history is concerned. Her question was this, uh, lovely video, can you make a video, tell us about your experience, the kind of papers you needed. STH and I want to say good morning and good afternoon and good evening to you wherever you are seeing this video from and what time it is at your end. Those of you who are not new to this channel you know already that I have been in both for some time now and this is the first video that I decided to make since I got to Bo and the reason is that it's been raining in Bo pretty much you hardly see the sun. This afternoon I was like this is kind of a good time to make a short video to update you but I think the questions you also put across in the comments inspired me to also put this together so that I can address some of these questions and so before we do that I just want to say thank you every one of you who followed the trip all the way from Accra Ghana to Bo in Sierra Leone for those of you who keep checking up to find out how I'm doing for all the love all the care all the support, all the encouragement, all the strength you give me on the road. It's been fun, really, very, very encouraging. I want to thank you. For those of you who also came across the episodes and you just decided to enjoy it without commenting or subscribing, it's okay. Everybody is equally appreciated. And so I'm going to go and get a place to sit and address the questions because this is a busy place, this is a restaurant, people might come in and so it will interfere with the entire discussion. So let's go and take a short ride and then we'll come back to the questions. The sun was up a couple of minutes ago, just after I came out of the restaurant, the clouds started forming again, as you can see. But anyways, the weather condition here in Bo can be very, very unpredictable. So yeah, we are heading towards the clock tower. It's quite a, a significant landmark as far as Bo's history is concerned. I think it, this clock tower was built during the colonial era and it's quite awesome as you can see. And so Bo is the second largest city economically politically, commercially, and education-wise in Sierra Leone after Freetown. And it is home to some of the biggest schools in Sierra Leone. Let me just go show you the Bo Shopping Plaza. Uh, well, I may be wrong, but uh, because the electricity condition is quite terrible in Bo at the moment, businesses are not flourishing right now inside the plaza. Uh, you find few shops like uh, boutiques, drinking water, mini factories, restaurants, photo studios, if I am correct. 
those will be the few things you find inside the plaza apart from that nothing massively happens and i believe if the government pays attention to it and invest into more especially allowing the electricity to run quite well it will give businesses some life it is expensive to run businesses with fuel now that fuel prices are arising at a very brutal levels in the days when fuel prices were not that high it was pretty difficult for people to run businesses how much more when fuel prices have gone up yeah nothing big here at the shopping plaza you find some chairs here playground for kids uh, basically that's all you find and i think because today is weekend you find some few kids playing around yeah, so let's go back into looking at the city i stopped to show you the plaza i was talking about Bo being home to some of the big schools in Sierra Leone. It is home to Sierra Leone's second largest university, Injala University. And uh, right in front, as you can see, that big tree ahead is the entrance of the prestigious Bo School. Education sort of took effect in Bo. as a result of the establishment of Bo Boys Secondary School in 1906. And some of the nation's biggest names, including the current president, attended Bo School. I just passed by the government hospital. So big ups to you, Bo Boys, old Bo Boys and current Bo Boys. Uh, if, I think the association is uh, old Bo Boys Association. I'll just take this runabout and then go into the city center proper or the market square of the city. This runabout here is right in front of the, I think it's the district police headquarters, I suppose. It's quite free today. It makes sense. It's Sunday. So businesses are not operating today. This is where you find some of the biggest shops. The banks all operate here. Some of the biggest businesses in the city are located right here at the Market Square. We're taking the Fenton Road. You can see the display of motorcycle taxis. That's how we roll here in Bo. We don't have commercial saloon cars or commercial buses commuting within the city or around town. You could only get commercial taxis and buses heading outside the city but within the city we commute around on motorcycle taxis and you see that blue one the tricycle whatever it is called popularly known here as keke just like in uh, nigeria and ghana i think they call them keke or yellow yellow yeah that's what we have and uh yes as far as this uh, help us to move around town conveniently, I think we are content, we are fine. So the first question I'm going to answer is from a sister called Millicent Jallo. 
and her question was this uh, lovely video can you make a video tell us about your experience the kind of papers you needed what kind of the map you used please i'm planning to travel by road for the first time from the gambia to sierra leone by car awesome millicent i hope you've not started your journey yet because your question came like a month ago and so if you are still preparing then this is the answer i'm going to give first of all my experience was great it was just amazing traveling on the road from ghana all the way to sierra leone on a motorbike for the first time it is fulfilling if you take on an adventure and you know that you are sailing through no matter how difficult it is so in general it was an impressive time for me on the road experiencing the different cultures nothing massively different but as far as languages and dialects are concerned it was quite interesting with all the cultural shocks even though we live in within the same region so for what document if you are in the west african sub region and you want to travel within the region you need your ECOWAS passport which allows you to visit member states visa free and also if you have your ECOWAS identity card so in Ghana for example we have what we call the Ghana card basically our ECOWAS identity card you can also try and get your yellow fever card or any medical document that may be requested if you have read and understood the immigration policies of the nations that you want to visit within the region of course yellow fever is required and also the other thing you need in this particular time of covid is to get vaccinated it is very important to be free from any harassment at the checkpoints because some of the officials can take advantage of that and maybe extort money from you it, it was very important for me to get vaccinated which i did so i didn't have any issues with the health officials at the board at the borders and also the immigration officials at the borders now the other thing that you need if you're coming with your vehicle is to make sure you get your dvla document i don't know what it is called in in the gambia but in ghana for example it is the driver and vehicle licensing authority your driving license and then you get the registration and custom clearance papers with motorbike i can advise you this is the, these are the things that you need but cars i don't really it should basically be the same you need to get your motorbike or your car insured i had a west african insurance which covers the bike in all the member states and that is basically it i hope this helps millicent and if there's any other thing that you wish to know my email is in the description i hope you travel safe I wonder how the routes are going to go but if you are on an adventure take it head on thank you for asking your question